Welcome back everybody. I hope you're having a great day. Today we will create our player class. We will move some code around but also add a few more animations to our player. So without any further ado, let's get into the episode with a quick recap from our last episode. We added updates to our game loop last episode. <laughs> no, not quite yet, but it's true though, that is what we added. But that wouldn't be the entire story. We also made our game loop much stronger. With our previous game loop, and even the one we used for the tower defense tutorial, we had no way of catching up if there was lag. And even if there was no lag, we would still lose a little bit of time every update in our game loop. We solved that by using a delta variable that never gets reset. So we now have a much more solid and cooler looking game loop. I read it 10 out of 10. I would code it again. First what we will do is to create a new package where we will have our player class. It will also store a couple of other classes such as the enemy and the types of enemies we will have. But uh, let's create the package first. So right click our source folder, new package and call it um, entities. And finish. But here we will create a super class if you will. A class that we can use both for the enemies and the player things that they both will have in common, so to speak. So right click, new class, and let's call this entity. And just to make it a bit more interesting, let's make it an abstract class. So public abstract class entity. And now you might be wondering, what the hell is an abstract class? Well, it's a class that you cannot create an object of. We make it abstract, so we never create just an entity. We will extend it and store values, such as position and health and what have you. Types of values that both the enemy and the player will use. So for this entity, we're gonna take in two values to begin with. So public entity. And it will be just to start out with a float x and a float y. And we will store them just like usual x y then this dot x equals x this dot y equals y like so oh my bad it should be protected and not private private means that only this class can use x and y even if we extend this class but if it's protected only classes that extends entity can now use x and y so it should be protected and not private and now we can create the player class. So right click, new class, and we call it player, of course. And player will now extends entity. And then it's gonna say add constructor. And this one you might recognize, super, just like the one we have in game panel where we say super, and then call a super class. We do the same here. So we take in X and Y and we pass it over to our entity class where, store, where it's stored. So we don't have to code as much. So this is just how objected oriented programming works. And this player class will have a public void update. So we can well update the player. And then we will have a public void render. So we can render the player. And in our game panel, you know what? Let's put it on the right side here. So we will not remove anything in game panel, but we will copy this 2D array. And I don't think we need the image, which is the Atlas, because we're not gonna store the Atlas, we're just gonna use it. We're just gonna use it temporary when we are creating the animation. So we don't need to bring that in. Then copy this one and we place it at the bottom. We do need the image, but we don't need, yeah, let's just grab, let's just grab this entire import image code, but not the method and place it at the top here. And let's do something sneaky. Let's just take this section we just copied inside and place it right underneath here. So we just store the buffered image inside here because we just need to use it for a short period of time. And that should get rid of all the errors. Perfect. Here we load the animations and here we do that. In case something fails, we have that. Yeah, that looks all right. Uh, we can minimize these two. Let's just start from the top. So we need to set directions at moving. 
update animation tick animation update position and we just grab all of that up to this and then underneath render we copy it all in and there's a lot of errors all right let's take them one at a time we don't need a delta we have x and y so we're going to change that but we do need all of these like so we should lose a few errors yeah but instead of x delta we just use x y x y and all our errors are now gone perfect but we don't call them ever so let's copy what's ever inside our update game and place it inside update and whatever is inside our paint component let's copy that and place it inside our render and let's close that one down for now and we of course need to pass in graphics g and instead of delta we have x and y and we need import the graphics should be fine now of course we need to call that load animation so right underneath super we say load animations please and we should be ready to go i think let's uh, go over to the game panel again and then we can just remove this from update and this from paint component like so and then we can remove update position we can remove everything pretty much that set direction yes import image yes bye bye load animation bye bye and calling those two we don't need that we can remove all of these variables like so wow that's a much smaller game panel just like we want and now inside our game class we're gonna create the player but there is an error inside our keyboard inputs we will get to that in a second we're gonna leave it for now but inside our game we can say a private player player and we initialize it oh we need to import it yeah we do other package we need to import it so in our constructor let's just create a method that actually initialize all the uh, initialize player enemies handlers and so on so we don't have just a long list here we have it in a specific method so i usually call it init classes and then create that method and in here we say player equals new player and what's the position say zeros uh, let's say 200 200 so we start so we can so we can see him actually that's gonna give us an error because we start the game loop and as soon as we start the game loop we're gonna be stuck in here so we need to start that one uh, before the game loop game loop should be the last thing we start in here something like that and then in our update um, we can remove that game panel update we don't have anything inside game panel in our update we say player dot update so right underneath update we add a method called public void render graphics g and now we're gonna go a little bit back and forth but this is just the quickest way to solve it right now and then we can check how we want it later so in our game panel where we have paint component we say game dot render and then pass it g we will probably create a dedicated class for both the update and the render but this episode is about the player so we just do a macgyver solution so we're going from from game into game panel and then back to game again to use this method but we need to pass in this uh, the game into game panel so this and game panel needs it as well so game game private game game this dot game equals game all right so in our game now where we have the render we say player dot render we do need to address the errors in our keyboard inputs and instead of saying game panel dot set moving we're gonna create a 
together inside our game here. And we're gonna have a getter for public player, get player. And then simply return player. And then inside our game panel, we're gonna add another getter for game. So public game get game and return game. Now inside our keyboard inputs, we can now call game panel dot get game. So inside game and then inside game, we can get player. So now inside our game board inputs, we can just call get game dot get player dot let's just copy this line right there and then poof that should work yeah so let's do it for all of them so we're going from to game panel then to game and then we are inside the player class so should this work i think so let's take a quick look in our game here we call player.update and then player.render yeah, I think this is going to work. Let's give it a try. And I saw an error right away. What was that? And that's actually my bad. It should be init classes at the top before game panel. Because inside game panel, we have a method called game.render. And in render, we have the player, but player is not yet initialized. So it will give an error for the first time, but the second time it won't. So. But uh, if we do keep it at the top, it should give us no error. And no error was found. Perfect. It's working. Just like before. But this isn't the greatest system. So you probably already figured out the problems with it. But before we start changing anything, we most likely will need to slow the player down. Because he's going way too fast. Something like that. One pixel is good enough. We just need to see him. And let's run it and see what is the problem. All right, so I'm gonna go to the right, then I'm gonna, I'm holding down D, then I'm holding down A, and I'm gonna release A, but I'm still holding my finger on button D. And he should go to the right right now, but he's not. And that has to do with no matter what key we release, we set it to false. So that's a bad system. And we're going to fix that, but we're going to start in our player class. And instead of saying player direction, we're going to add a couple of booleans, which is private boolean left, up, right, and down. So this set direction, we can remove. Set moving, we can remove. We can uh, remove this from update position. And at the very bottom, we add a couple getters. And we're gonna do this easiest way. So right click, source, generate getters and setters. And then we choose up, right, left, down, and create, or generate actually. Save that. And in our keyboard inputs, and instead of saying set moving false, we're gonna call the corresponding Boolean. So for D, which is to the right, we said set right false. And we're going to do this for all of those buttons. So for S, for A, and for W. So for W, we're going up, set up. Then we're going to say A is set left, and S is down. So set down. That's better. Then we can actually copy this entire switch and replace this one because then we only have to change this one to true. And save it. And we should get rid of all errors here. Yeah. And then go to player. And inside our update position is where we're going to check how we're going to update the position of the player. But we're going to have to do a few checks in case we're pressing both the left and the right button we would stand still because they are cancelling each other so we make a check like if left and not right meaning we're pressing left and we should not be pressing to the right we do x minus equal and let's add that variable actually so private float player speed equals uh, 2.0 float 
for now. Plus equal player speed. Else, if you're pressing right but not left, we want to say x plus equals player speed. Else if. It should be else if. Not else. Else if. So first we're checking if we're pressing just the left, otherwise we're checking if we're only pressing the right. If we're pressing both of them, we don't move the x. And then we do an identical, but for y. So if up and not down, do something. we do y minus equal player speed, else if down and not up y plus equal player speed perfect but the way we have our animation set up if we are moving that we're setting to running if we're not running we're setting it to idle so every time we enter one of these we say moving equals true that means we're moving that means we're moving and that also means that we're moving and this means we're moving we have no way of resetting moving now. So we need to have a moving equals false at the very top. So we're setting it to false by default. Unless one of these are true, we're gonna remain false. But if one of these are true, that means we are moving. So when we are rendering, we're gonna be rendering the player action running. And let's just take a look here. Position should probably be above animation. Because this one sets moving true, and then this checks whether or not moving is true. If it is, then we're setting a specific animation. So if everything is working correctly, we should have a more solid running animation and animation in general. So we're standing still, moving to the right, clicking A. I'm standing still. I'm releasing right. I'm continuing to the left, right, releasing right. And this also allows us to go diagonally. So now we can go up and right. Which is really cool. So left and right cancel out each other. What about up and down? They cancel out. Beautiful. This system isn't foolproof either. Let's give it a try and see if we can break it. So right now I'm just moving around like normal. Nothing, con no nothing special. So I'm starting here, and then I'm gonna to run to the right. And while I'm do while I do run to the right and holding my finger on the button D for moving to the right, I'm gonna switch window. So I'm gonna to switch to my web browser here on the right and see what happens. So three, two, one, go! And I'm switching. I'm holding no fingers on my keyboard. Actually, I can do like so. But the player is still running. He's in Narnia now. He's He's way off. He's still running. And that's a problem that can occur when you're using booleans. We're setting it to true, but since we switched the window and then let go of our fingers, none of these buttons get called. So the game still thinks that we are holding down some of the keys, or rather, they never got the key event that we released it. That's something we need to address because the game window can lose focus. Maybe you accidentally click your web browser, for example, in this case, or you get one of those lovely, it's time to update your windows. You know, there's a reason why I switched to Linux a long time ago, so that's one of them. And that can happen, so we need to have a way of dealing with it. That's what we're going to do. We're going to add some code magic in our game window, actually. We've not been here for a very long time. And what we're going to add in here is a way to detect whether or not we lost the focus. And if we lose the focus, we want to say all booleans, pff, false. Don't do nothing. Just stop. We do that by calling, by saying jframe.add window focus listener. And then just like a normal listener, new window focus listener. Oof. And we got two, two events here. We got one for when we lose it and when we gain it. And we most likely just care about this window lost focus. So let's try and see if it works. And before we start coding the logic here, what we want to do when it loses, we just want to see if it works. So let's remove this comment and say sysu, control, space, enter. And then we say bye, 
save and then we're gonna run the game again and let's see if I can trigger it it doesn't trigger if I just hover around something else and actually need to click something so let's see what happens when I click my editor bye so now we have a way of detecting if we lose focus so what we want to do is inside here and we want to call game panel which is the one we actually have access to we say game panel dot get game uh, window focus lost and then we're going to create this method inside our game here let's do it at the bottom so public void windows focus lost and we can just say player we're going to add more here most likely so we say player dot uh, reset their booleans we might have more booleans than just direction so but this direction we want to actually reset at the bottom um, here public void and then say left equals false right equals false you get it up equals false and also down equals false so let's see if we try to get the same bug and if that is dealt with now so so three two one go and it worked beautiful so that's great. Now our player won't run to Narnia just because we switched to our web browser. Before we end this episode, I did promise one thing, and that was more animations. So let's add at least one more. And why not the attack animation? So every time we click the left mouse button, we attack. And we're going to start inside our player class and just add another boolean next to moving called attacking. And we can set it to false. And then we need a setter, so let's scroll down here and underneath reset dear booleans we say public void set attack. And it takes in a boolean attacking or rather set attacking should match. And then this dot attacking equals attacking. And every time we click, we want to change the animation. So we're going to do some changes in our set animation method. And right now we just have two. We have running and idle. If we're moving, we're running. If we're not, then we set to idle. But what if we are moving and we are attacking? Which animation should we have? Well, we should have the attacking animation. So how do we solve that conundrum? We do that by just adding a if at the bottom. That's called if attacking. Then we say player action equals and which attack was it? Attack one. So we build that one. So equals attack one. But we have no way of setting attack to false. We only have when we click, we want to set attack, but we want to stop the attack animation when we are at the end at uh, animation index when it reaches the end. And when we reach the end right now, we just set animation index equals zero. But let's add two brackets here and let's keep animation index inside. But we also say attacking equals false. So just in case it's true, it's going to go to false and we're going to stop attacking. We start the attack animation right here and we end it in here. So let's go to our mouse inputs because it's our left mouse button. So if e dot get button is equal to mouse event dot button one button one is left two middle three is the right one then we say game panel dot get game dot get player dot set attacking true all right so let's give this a try shall we starting it up and i'm clicking left mouse button uh, we get and if I spam click we get an attack if I just click once in a while the attack isn't always there and I know the reason and that's because when we set a new animation we never reset the animation tick and not the index maybe we are currently at uh, idle in animation and we are at index 2 this is 2 actually and then I click attack and it's just one frame, maybe even half a 
half the duration of one sprite. So every time we change our animation, we should reset the animation index and also the animation tick. So we start at zero, so we get a new and a full duration of that animation. And we're gonna do that in a very simple way. At the start of our set animation, we're gonna create a integer start animation. We just call it start any equals player action. And we can put it at the top actually. And at the bottom, we're gonna check if start any is equal to the player action we have after this check. So that means we never changed it. But if we did, and it should be is not equal to player action, we're actually looking for any changes. And if there is a change, then it's a new animation, we should reset our animation tick and animation index. So set any tick, something like that. And we create that method. And in here we say animation tick equals zero and animation index equals zero as well. So let's give it a try and see if it looks any better now. So can run, yes. Can we attack? And we get the full animation. Beautiful. And there it is. The episode is finished. We now got a player class with better movement and even one more animation to the mix. I do hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button and also subscribe. And if you wish to support my work, there's a link in the description below. The next episode is going to be about something really cool. Something we really need for this to be a platformer game. But I won't give any hints for now. You gotta wait and see. To round up this episode, I hope to see you in the next update as well. Take care now and have a wonderful day. Bye.